Yeah, good morning to all the viewers that have tuned in earlier this morning. Uh, they caught us a bit off guard. Uh, started a bit earlier than was scheduled to. But uh, yeah, as you can see, they've already played three three ends. Richardson four one up over Warner. Uh, Richardson hailing from Ikrulini and uh, Warner from Border. So yeah, welcome and good morning. Hope you. I'm sure it's it's past coffee time already for those people that are on on air watching. Let's see, we've got 71 71 people watching at the at the moment. Started off a bit rainy again in Cape Town this morning, but it looks like the weather is clearing nicely. We should have uh, good weather with no wind for the rest of the day, which is always a blessing in Cape Town. I will also see the green speeds increasing a little bit or tremendously during the day. And uh, they'll just get quicker and quicker once it dries out. Great ball there by Warner. Now Richardson seems to be on a good track. Oh, she's played it well. Might just just run, run past a little bit too much. Now just a recap on the scoring again and how it works. They play two sets of nine ends. And if it's uh, obviously it's not the combined score of the two sets. So it, each set is individual. And uh, if it's one set apiece, they will play a three end tiebreaker where scores count and not points. So, yes, so basically that's how it works. It's one set for one point for each set. I think we've there was a bit of a well, not a mistake, a confusion yesterday with the scoring, where they we said it was out of five, and apparently it's only it counts out of three. So it's one one point for each set one, and one point for the game one. Once again, for those online, feel free to leave comments, ask questions, and uh, we will keep up with the comments, try and respond to the questions. And if you are watching from abroad, please put your name down there so we can also say hello or give our greetings all the way from down in Cape Town, South Africa. Warner seems to have gotten another Another shot there, it looks like she's holding two. Yeah, is conceding two shots there, so Warner Picking up two shots there, so it's 4 3 after 4 in in the first set.
Yeah, it's good to see some a large amount of spectators already streaming in for this second day of the Pulsar Africa Masters. I'm sure we're going to have the banks will be packed by my lunchtime today. And uh, yeah, if you're in the area, please come down and support. So it's going to be a lovely day out, like I said, with no wind in Cape Town, which is always a pleasure. and just running into a, a first ball. It's always important when the green's a bit sticky in the morning with the water falling this morning, it's important to get that first ball up, which makes it easier to adjust. want to hold in three shots at the moment. Decent track. He's just played it with a bit too much weight and the ball holding up there. Oh, it's a Warner turning in Richardson's ball there. I don't think. I think he's. Now only holding two. Oh. Oh, Richardson's played a brilliant ball there. Looks like it's one to Richardson. So I should take a five a three lead. Richardson over Warner. Richard just coming and going as uh, it's a small technical difficulty. I'm sure we'll have it sorted in in no time. Yeah, I see there's a couple more people that have, have tuned in this morning. Viewership up to 93 at the moment. Welcome and good morning for those who just tuned in. Uh, this is the fifth session of uh, the Veterans Masters. And uh, obviously it's at various, it's ladies then men. And then we'll have ladies and we'll finish off this afternoon with the men playing the last session. shot by the looks of it.
Okay, indicating that indeed yellow one is holding one. Just looks like she's down on a decent line again. All about good weight here. Oh, she's just bad another brilliant ball there. This finishing try of Jack Eye. Holding two. Richardson not down on the silly line, yeah. She looks good. Oh, she's managed to play a good one there. Two down gets number one. It's uh, not quite in the favour of Warner now because she wouldn't want to get any movement on that red ball or the white move. She could go more than one down. So I'm sure she'll just be looking to touch the white on the forehand. Played with good weight, just just outside the line. It looks like it's one two. Richardson there. It should take a six three up after six ends. Three ends left in the first set. Also important to always give a mention to the sponsors of the tournament uh, in perfect delivery and personal trust. Uh, they've got a very good, very good relationship going between the two of them. They always keen supporters of bowls and uh, generously sponsor Malone Bowls in South Africa. So it's always good to give them a mention. If you have any financial needs or need insurance, feel free to contact uh, either one of them. Perfect delivery more into the insurance, as you can see on the top left of your screen. Personal trust, uh, more of an investment, uh, financial investment, and uh, portfolio managers. So feel free to give them a call then. And let him let him take care. Oh, I wanna just I think she's just uh I didn't come out of the hand quite nicely. Ball there for Mona. Just coming up about a foot short. Mona wouldn't be wanting to drop uh, another count on this end. Uh, otherwise, it becomes an enormous task to get back into the first set. Being 6 3 down, 3 ends to, three ends to play. Down on a decent line. Just played it over the weight. So pressure building in this first set for Warner. She just needs to to recollect and try and do her best with that. It only takes one ball. Oh, Richardson is just applying a bit of pressure there. Let's see. If Let's see what Warner can do here. I think she's about three or four down. She's down on a decent line. Oh, she's played a brilliant wood there. She 
as I said, uh, it was very important for her to to score at least uh, one there. Which makes it 6-4 with two ends to play. Always still in with the chance of taking the first set. Yeah, just also if they happen to if they happen to peel both sets will be levels and score in both sets. Um, the game point will also be shared. So it should then be one and a half points to each. If that happens, we haven't had it happen yet, but it is a possibility. So if both uh, if both sets are shared they will they will also then share the game points. There will be no tiebreaker. But uh, once again, a lovely ball from Warner there, getting herself firmly back into the set after being three or four down to the shot with the last ball. As you see, a lot more fans and spectators uh, streaming in here. Fans are filling up quite and quite quickly. Oh, that's a better. That's a better start there by Warner. Has to apply the early pressure and she's done just that. Oh, Richardson looks like she's just gonna come up short. Brilliant line there. Surprisingly changing a hand. That hand just seems to be a, a tad heavier than the other hand. Just and down on a decent line again, she needs to get up. Just hasn't uh, corrected the weight there. Uh, Warner still in control of this this end, holding one. Warner seems to have played it just under the line there. She has very good weight there. A little touch on the white would have been brilliant. But just falling under the line. And as she uh, so consistent, just just that foot, foot and a half short. Played three balls on, on three great lines there. Seems to be a better line here by Warner. Oh, that's a great ball there. Applying the pressure. Longer levels in the set, depending on the last ball. Richardson just opting to have a little <coughs> walk up to the head. See exactly what the position on the balls are and what the, the possible shot is to play with the next ball. So she'll just be trying should be trying just to add that little bit of weight and correct the line she's she had three brilliant lines and all she needs is that little half a foot or foot of weight what was the reasoning behind that but she played uh, over the weight and Warner scoring two shots on that end so 
and we will have a winner of the first set unless it's a no shot. Scores are level with one end to play in the first set. Just disappearing down in Cape Town. It's turning out to be a stellar day. Uh, sun will be out. Temperatures will probably get up to about the mid 20s as the day progresses. And yeah, this first game's already off to an interesting start as they are peeled playing the last end of the first set. So find out uh, who will have the advantage going into the second set. Once again, feel free to ask questions and leave comments. Let us know if you're watching from abroad. Uh, once again, Warner. That's a decent, it's about a foot and a half short of the jack. Looks like Richardson's played just slightly, she played three short ones on the previous end and I think she just kind of let the white deteriorate a little bit. I want to be looking to put more pressure on here. Oh, I want to also coming up about a meter short of on the jack there. Which is in ones again she's Just hasn't corrected enough and she's under that line. So not leaving herself with many options if she wanted to change her hand. It's uh, quite a nervous India for Richardson. She's she's two or three down. And obviously now being short with the first two balls, she you, you, know, you tend to try and overcorrect. And you know, I've worn it down with a very good ball here again. She made it slightly more difficult. I don't think Richardson should even try and change her weight. It's, uh, like we would say, duck on her dinner. She's down on a decent track. She's not going to get back, is she? Does she get back in front? It's what an effort. Uh, she might have just drawn the shot there. What the one? Okay. Okay. So it comes down to a measure. We'll soon find out who's the winner of the first set here. Seems like Richardson has managed with the last ball to, to win that first set 7 6. She was four shots down, then she threw number one.
Warner did exactly what she needed to do and Richardson left it up to her last ball. As I just said earlier, it only takes only takes one ball. Yeah, so we're starting the we're we'll starting the first set, uh, end of the second set here. First set uh, belongs to Richardson. To a great shot with the last ball to take the first set. I'm sure, that will give uh, a bit of confidence. She just seemed to have just kind of lost the rhythm in the last two ends, but that ball should give her a little bit more confidence, and I'm sure she will be. She should be back up to speed in the, in the second set. Open with a very good first ball there, applying the pressures right from the get go. That's it, Bola. Talking about Warner getting it past the white, so it should be easier for her to adjust from there rather than playing a ball short. And a good line, she just, oh, she's past that. That's exactly what I was talking about. It's much easier to adjust your weight. Still think she's one down, but she's adjusted the weight quite nicely from that first ball. Richardson also down on a decent line here. Yeah, it's just running about a half a foot past. Half a foot behind the white there. Warner might even consider playing a forehand here. No, she's persisting on the back end. I'll try and beat her own ball. I think she I mean, just falls off her own ball, she'll get number one. Uh, even if she turns it from the outside, very good decent weight, about a foot of weight, uh, fast weight. Good ball, yeah. yeah. It's a very good ball there, but just and I think that'll force Warner to play a forehand now. And I'm sure she will. She'll have to play it with a bit, a bit more weight now. Anything she she gets onto there, it's in her favour. Coming down with, which I thought she would have a bit more. Hey, she played it with good weight. Maybe a little bit more to hold that line, but not the worst. She's only two down. As, uh, Richardson taking a 2 0 lead here in the first end of the second set. No real wind to speak of just yet, it's a light breeze. A light breeze keeping everything nice and cool. Sure we're gonna have a lovely day in Cape Town. Yeah, 
just putting a little comment up there if there's any sort of strange sound that's coming from the from the audio then it's unfortunately something that we cannot help uh, it's one of the it's a water system at Western Province Cricket Club that's some sort of a pump or something that's making that strange sound I'm not sure that we can we can do anything to prevent it Ball there by Warner. All the white. Now Richardson just coming up short there. He's better a number of balls short. And I think uh, that's costly at times because you, know, you are then forced to try and adjust, especially when the greens are a bit sticky, like they are early this morning. We saw that yesterday on that forehand. There's a little bit of a line there that it just seems to kick out and hold up there on that forehand, away from the clubhouse. Good morning to Jane, all the way from New Zealand. Lovely to have you watching. I'm sure which part of New Zealand you're from, but uh, I'm sure the weather is quite similar. One thing I know is the green speeds aren't. I know New Zealand's greens are quite quick. Speeds at the moment is probably about touching 12 seconds. I know New Zealand can get up to 20 seconds, 22 seconds. So, yeah, but welcome and it's lovely to have you watching here with us. It looks like Warner's holding two shots there. Once again, just to let you know, for the people that have just tuned in, we're streaming the veterans, and that is the over 60s, 60s and above, we're streaming the veterans, South African masters. Seems to have only been one shot there. Oh, so after two ends in the second set, uh, advantage Richardson, 2 1 up. And let's hope uh, we can also have a nice and close set here to make. Uh, for a very really exciting finish to this game. Oh, welcome Jared, our old mate from Cape Town. He's also watching from New Zealand. Welcome, I hope you're gonna Gonna stick around to have some action of the men later. Also, miss you, pal. <laughs> it's lovely to see you online and 
Uh, congratulations. I hear you're going to be a father soon. So congratulations on that. Now, Warner opening up with a very good first ball there, applying the pressure. Richardson playing a first ball with uh, about a meter and a half of weight. I'm joined in commentary now by Claire Cowan, also one of our inter-district bowlers in Western Province. It's always lovely to get some female inside as, as they probably know a little bit more about the female game. <laughs> what about the female mindset, you did? Well, I'm, I'm sure I'm not, uh, not going to dig too deep into that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll stick to what's happening on on the screen in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> and Richardson once again, the first set I saw that happen, Claire, it's just kind of she, she, she started well and lost a bit of the rhythm and uh, Warner got back at her and it looks like the same thing's happening in the second set. Yeah, I know they would definitely want to put a bit of pressure on Richardson here and build the head nice and consistently, make it difficult for Richardson to get in. Once again forced to play with good weight. She's Ooh. just... She might even be three down now. Now Jared will get back to you. Uh, I'm not quite unsure who's the next, who the men are playing next. But we'll keep you updated. The next game is going to be just seen on the screen to my left will be Tiens Fraser, the ex South African coach, up against Mark Bevis Chalino from Bola. That should make for exciting viewing as well. I'm sure you have uh, f future aspirations to also be invited to this tournament. <laughs> I think uh, any young bowler who's just starting out on their bowls journey watching this sure, incredible level of bowls um, would love to compete here at one day. Um, yeah, it was a treat. I came to yesterday afternoon after, after work. Wish, wish I could have taken the whole day off just to come and watch bowls. But I'll definitely be here the rest of the weekend watching. Um, it's an absolute treat to to watch these players um, put to test their skills. Yeah, it shouldn't be too difficult for you. And for those who don't know, Claire is also ex uh, South African ladies cricketer. So yeah, a very accomplished uh, sportswoman in her own right. So I'm sure you'll you'll be here soon. Yeah, let's <laughs> let's hope so, Eugene. Keep putting in the hard work, doing the right things. So we have six ends left in the second set. It's uh, advantage Warner, 3 2 up. And both of them just uh, coming up short with their first balls. Yeah. Clear the green's still a bit tacky this morning. It's obviously had a bit of rain again this morning. Yeah, there was quite a bit of rain overnight. I woke up in Pinelands also to do the rain falling. We played our. Uh, Western Province pairs here last weekend and it was, yeah, tacky is probably a very good word early in the morning to describe yeah. it. A little bit heavy, a little bit thick. I'm pretty sure it'll pick up as, as, as we go along. Yeah, absolutely. It seems to have the clouds are starting to disappear and the gentle breeze, I'm sure it won't get any worse than that. Yeah. Right? What did you 
Definitely no more drain predicted for today, so let's hope it stays like that. One was on a decent line, they're just running about a foot and a half past Jack Eye there. Okay, also well done in your know, inter district uh, B gold medal. Uh, brought uh, Tory back to Western Province. Uh, well done on that. Thank you, Eugene. Thank you. It was a fantastic, fantastic week. Great, great learning experience. Sort of, you learn it, you see it over and over again, but uh, just how important the team, teamwork, team dynamic is. We went, went away as nine individuals and definitely molded over the week to come back and play as a, an amazing team and, and win the gold. It was something special. I think what made it even more special was uh, beating JVA in the final <laughs> at Morningside. It was an incredible atmosphere too. Yeah, for sure. And it's, uh, it's always been a great rivalry between Johannesburg and, and Cape Town. And uh, yeah, well done. Congrats. And hopefully we'll see you, see you in the mix for the A side next year. Oh, maybe we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Up to the selectors. They need to do their job. <laughs> yeah. Looks like Richardson's holding two there. Yeah. Sometimes very... It's difficult to see with the angles on the... on the monitor in front of us. And all we can see, what you can see is the viewers. So. Sometimes it looks like... It's a clear two or one, <laughs> and, uh, which is not the case. Yeah, they're calling for the, the umpire for the measure on the third. Also ball sitting at very different angles. If I, if I have to look at uh, what's going on, well, if I look at it on the green, it looks like the red ball, and on the monitor from behind, <laughs> that angle, you'll see it looks like the blue ball. <coughs> I'm just tightening up the measure there. Red. Yeah, red ball's well in. So that's uh, three shots to Nola Richardson. Taking the advantage again here in the second set. So advantage Richardson goes what's it, five, four off to four ends. Five, three. Apologies, 5-3 of the 4 ends. Yeah. Oh, there you can see a bit clear now, it's just... It's, from my angle it's a bit blurry so I can't see the scoreboard quite nicely. been really fascinating watching this format of play with having the uh, two sets and the tiebreaker. I think it also it makes for for great viewing and it makes it exciting for the spectators. It, Absolutely. It always uh, it keeps both players in the game, doesn't matter which way the first set goes. You always have a chance to come back in the second set. So it's a game of two halves. Uh, mentally it keeps you in the game all the time. It will also be really interesting after this tournament um, for some clever people to have a look at the stats and see how often the, the player that wins the second who's down in the first set and then wins the second set, set wins the tiebreaker with that momentum. You know, Bolsa often is about that momentum. So it would be really interesting to have a look at <laughs> some of those stats. Um. Yeah, it's, it's, um, you know, sometimes when you get into a tiebreaker, the person that's, that's lost a bit of... <laughs> Lost a bit of momentum, can either struggle or they can. Doing a great job. 
really come back and and fire in the tiebreaker. So yeah, it would be interesting to see if, if we could ever see stats of that. If you win the second set, do you go on to win the tiebreaker? Absolutely. And we always say bowls is such a mental game. And and that would you know, sort of you'd really be able to see that coming out of those sort of stats. You know, it looks like Richardson has you know, found somewhat of a bit of a rhythm going again now. Backing them in closer together. Stel King watching from Benoni Lake Lake Club Benoni. Welcome. Good to see you supporting your fellow bowlers. You know, Richardson's played another good ball here. Yeah. It's a beautiful yes. ball. She's applying the pressure here to take the second set. I want to just. Uh, Taking a breather, and we can see what the exact uh, positioning is of the balls down in the head. They have seen that so often that people, sometimes when you play against people, especially when it's singles, they, they just get on and play. And sometimes a good thing just to relax, take that break, walk down and see what's happening. Yeah, that clarity in, in shot selection is so important. And it is a big shot, yeah? One or two down in the set. Ideally needs to pick up here to <clears throat> keep her set alive. Not for sure, and then we drop a count of three here, but uh, yeah. be hard work to get back and try and salvage the second set. But it's also interesting the difference between the men's and the ladies' game. You often see the men coming up to the head a lot more than you would see the la ladies often. And it's just my opinion, even from, from inter-districts. Um, you often see the, the men going up to have a look at the head and the lady skips just relying on the third. Yeah, I mean, the men obviously also run after their balls quite more than the women. <laughs> Were you calling us lazy or something? <laughs> <laughs> I, wouldn't, I wouldn't use uh, that description. <laughs> Oh, one was in a decent track here. Oh, she's got rid of one. I think she needed a bit more full contact on that ball to move the white out back. Absolutely. Nevertheless, uh, two is better than three. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't call it lazy clear. I think it's just uh, women are a little bit more relaxed when they play. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I think men. And the adrenaline kicks in and yeah. just want to get going. No, absolutely, yes. <laughs> and it's the excitement. I think also it's that excitement. And uh, ladies traditionally, I suppose, are a little bit more, as you say, calmer in nature. Um, I, know, I know I like to run after a decent bowl every now and again, but I think it's more to get rid of my energy than anything else. <laughs> yeah. Bowl's more a mentally tiring sport than a physically tiring sport. So. <laughs> But yeah, I, so I think men also if there's what, what impacts it a lot is if there's crowds around mm. running off to the ball and you know, getting a little bit of involvement with the crowd, I think that's mm. also what makes the men run off to the balls quite often. <laughs> that's funny also how you can actually feed off the energy of the crowd. Just uh, sometimes that lifts your game. You know, so with uh, four ends to play in the second set, uh, Richardson with a Richardson with a big advantage, seven three up, and obviously starting with another good ball there, about a half a meter short. been finding this back end coming down quite well. If she's gonna if she's gonna pull it back there I think please she's will, she'll have to pick up coming this way because she hasn't been scoring uh, 
quite a lot of shots going in. Towards the clubhouse. Towards the clubhouse. Yeah. Well, Richardson's put in a, a good ball there. Not indicating with the lollipop, so we aren't sure as to if that ball, last ball is the shot or not. Another boy to win into the head there. Yeah, just coming around Richardson Bowl, marker indicating that the lollipop that one is holding one. She obviously needs to score this in, otherwise, uh, I said it will slip away. Somewhat. I really like what one is trying to do here. It's changing her hand. The has been kicking quite a lot, too. it's just... It's holding out. Yeah. I've seen it yesterday, throughout the day as well. It's, even when you play with a bit of weight, it just seems to not come back. We'll come back quite in. Quite as nice. Okay, he's got a good morning there from Louis from Belleville. <laughs> okay, Paula, good morning. Lovely to see we've already had 490 views this morning. Incredible. The streaming of this event has been just absolutely brilliant from all the broadcasters. I was sitting at work with my two screens being very sneaky, different windows open, <laughs> running between YouTube and Facebook. Hopefully no one from work is listening to that. <laughs> it's fine, you work in sports environments, so they must, they, they must understand. <laughs> Yesterday we had, I think it was just over 3,000 views. It's incredible, brilliant. That's only for the Veterans Masters. I'm unaware of what's happening with other broadcasters. With the other broadcasters. That always helps with the sponsorship, getting those views in. Yeah, for sure, and I think, uh, I think it will grow in the days <laughs> years to come. Claire, what do you think she'll be trying to do here? Oh, you know what kind of balls I play. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, one would still keep in it, so I don't... Yeah, she probably doesn't need to play too risky here. If she gets under that red ball and touches the wide, she might make three of it. Hey. Just over. She played it a decent weight, though. I think it was very good weight. If she got a little tickle on that, then she could have been picking up that two or three. That would have really put the pressure back on Richardson for this next end. Yes, but picking sure. up the one, at least uh, she's still in it within touching distance. So, removing the one ball looks like they might opt to go for a measure on the second. Shot to Warner there, keeps her, keeps her alive in the set. <coughs> it looks like Warner's going for the for the longer end. She seems to have picked up that Richardson's just not as consistent on the longer ends. The diffs with uh, three ends to play in the second set. Warner can start this set well. Um, it could be a very, very interesting end. I think this is the longest length we've seen in the afternoon in this game <laughs> so far, so it will be interesting to see if either one of them 
actually find it. Yeah. Still tech is a, my, might have been a dangerous option <laughs> to go, go that long. Jack length is about 32 meters. Yep. I wouldn't say there's any real advantage at the moment, <laughs> rather than coming up uh, a little bit more than two meters short there. That so often happened. When you try and adjust weight after being <laughs> short, you run past the white. Oh. Quite a bit more of a loose end here, with a change of length. As I say, clearly we have to try everything if it's if it's not going in your, in your favour or <laughs> that is it's going your way. You need oh. to change something. Well, that's worked for Warner. Yeah, advantage you might even be holding three. Yeah. What's that lovely saying? Fortune favours the brave. That's for sure. <laughs> Good weight adjustment there by Richardson. I'm sure, it's only one. There's only one now. Yep, mark indicating one shot to Una. Shoulder one. Looks like we're going to come down to the wire again. Yeah. The appeals. The appeals playing the last uh, end of the first set. In fact, Richardson was three down and she drew. Number one with the last ball to win the first set, so... <laughs> if Richardson can collect that one, I think she's just played it under the line again. Certainly a good way to collect that what. I think it's uh, one holding one shot here, clear. Oh, definitely one out. I think it's only the one. Oh. Mark indicating one to Warner, so he's clawing away back into the set. 7 5 now to Richardson with two ends left to play. Certainly, uh, Warner would, be, would need to score this end. Otherwise, uh, I think I think it'll be all over. Yeah, well, Warner needs to get on the board here. I mean, pick up a two here would be ideal. Um, she's gone long again. Yes. Not quite as Not, long as the yeah. previous one, but certainly longer than all the ends they've been playing in this game. And to those uh, viewers that just tuned in, uh, please stay tuned. Uh, well, well, firstly, welcome. Uh, hope you enjoy the day streaming with us. Obviously, we have four sessions. This is the first of four sessions throughout the day. So please stay tuned uh, and please share and like our pages. And uh, let's get the numbers up a little bit. Like I said earlier, it helps with sponsorships, uh, uh, especially towards um, getting more streaming going in the balls community. <laughs> Some better starts from Egypt in there. Yeah, about half a meter in front. Okay, I think Richardson, I don't know who can tell you, the mindset would probably be to try and finish out this set here, not leave it to the last end. <laughs> <laughs> Eh? 
no, most definitely you don't want to be leaving things till the, the last end of the set. Yeah. Well, even if, if they end up uh, peeling the set, uh, Richardson will win the game. She's won the first set. <coughs> Richardson looks like, doesn't look like she's quite going to make it. She was in such a good line again. Surely putting the ball down on a very good line. I don't quite think it made it. No, I think it's a little bit on the short side to be counting. And that's what we all love about this game of bowls. So, me being a bit new into all of this, but played Nola last year in the Nationals and uh, we've stayed in contact on WhatsApp and all of that sort of thing and that's what I just love about it. It's just you come and you watch a BSA Masters and you see all these great players that you've played and had the privilege of playing against. Well, bowls is one of those bowls is one of those sports you make a lot of new friends. Absolutely. And memories and oh Warner just coming up short again there. I think Warner's still holding one there. Clearly, you've got a you've got a view of the green. Um, yeah, Warner's definitely. I say definitely. It is still awkward at our angle. Now oh, Richardson running through on that. I think it's only one. I'm sure, it looks like a good mesh. Yeah. <laughs> that didn't make a big difference as to. What happens in the last end of the, of the second set? So on screen it looks like the blue ball is clearly all in the shot, but I uh, stood up from my chair and uh, had a look at the head itself. And believe you me, it's a very good measure there. I don't think anyone, any one of the, oh, they're conceding without a measure. So it's 7-6, once again, another. <laughs> Tight finish to the second set. <laughs> Makes it more exciting for the viewers. If the games are close. And like you just said, uh, I think one has been scoring. I think, I think that was three or four ends in a row now. She's been scoring, so Richardson surely needs to do something to, to try and. Especially kind of break the flow of momentum. Yeah, the momentum. And again, Warner's gone for a full full length end, well as full as she can get it on the jack. And those are the ends where she's picked up now, so picking up a two year, take it to a tiebreaker. So I can't score one because then she was still those of you watching Warner needs to score two shots here to keep it alive. You are perfect. You, you've done all the things already. You're going away. Oh, you are going away. But you're in the gold spot. You would have done Open with a decent, inside there. decent first ball there, especially on a 32 meter length. The green being a bit tacky. Richardson changing her hand from the last end that they played this way up to the clubhouse. Unfortunately, she hasn't been finding a uh, finding a way. So yeah. it was a good change by Warner. No, absolutely. <laughs> oh, you can take one forty. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Yeah, I've got a threat in them when I say don't go. <laughs> opting to stick on that back end with that ball in a way. Yeah. Now the pressure really starts to build on Richardson because uh, she needs to score this end. Yeah, she's gone back to the full end now. Oh, that's been a quick hand. Uh, should see it get a little bit closer. Still just not finding that comfortable weight on this long ends. Actually interesting enough, uh, I think from the male's perspective now, I think it would be easier to just try and chop onto the blue balls and stay. 
where she's trying to comfortably like try and draw a shot. And Warner's actually could play another good ball here. That's a brilliant ball. Even if, if Richardson only concedes one shot, it's good for her. And she's sticking to that four now, see? Yeah, I think it's probably one of the biggest differences as well between the, the, the ladies and the males game, that. Yeah. Waiting for the camera angle to change. Richardson holding the one. Oh, there we go. She's drawn the shot. Oh, the blue ball's just fallen over. Just, uh, I'm not sure that it'll make a difference. I think uh, Warner's will play. Warner's going to play that shot that I was yeah, just uh, absolutely. talking about, trying to promote her balls. She gets inside that ball and gets the red ball in. I. Oh, oh could be interesting. Sure, they will go and have a look before Richardson plays the last ball. But Eugenia, as I was saying, the difference between the ladies and the men's game often that slightly just more attacking the top and lie shot. Potentially, it's the better percentage shot. Yeah, it's um, the ladies who are, I would say, a little bit more conservative. Conservative, yeah. Conservative That's would be the big, yeah. Conservative would be the right way to to describe it. There's a. Jane Bersie from New Zealand saying, my nerves, come on, Nola. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see that they also into the game? And, yeah. Richardson not, I'm pretty sure that she does, she's not sure that she's holding shot, that's why she's playing the last ball. I think that's absolutely it. I think that ball that uh, Nola found might have just nudged. She hasn't played it on a, on a bad line yet. Yeah. That's the question, is she holding one or is she holding, is, she, is Richardson holding or? <laughs> <coughs> They're not giving anything away up there, are they? If one is holding one shot, it wouldn't be enough, uh, that would, the game would be done. <coughs> it's definitely the one. Exceeding the one. No. I think uh, neither of the players actually saw the blue ball falling over after the marker has showed them that uh, the red ball's holding. No. I'm asking for a measure there. It was interesting there that uh, that weight that Richard played that shot with because if she'd found the outside of that ball, she could have clipped it in yeah. with that kind of weight. Oh, it's like you said earlier, a bit of risk reward. Yeah. She knew she was down, so she got the inside of that ball. Then it was a different story. <laughs> then she picks up two, dra dra trail a jack to, the, yes. to her back ball. Fortune favours the brave, <laughs> as, you, as you said. So it looks like uh, that concludes the game. Only one. Warner picking up the one, so uh, Richardson winning, winning that game. Obviously getting think, two, two points out of that. And yeah, it's lovely to have seen uh, 593 views this morning, Claire. Uh, I think uh, we're going to see some good balls during the day. Hopefully we can get you back here later. I'd love to be back on air again, not a problem. So yeah, thank you to all the viewers for this uh, early morning game. Next session up we'll see Mark Bevis Challenge or take on Tians Fraser. It will make for some um, great viewing. Both of them very good veteran bowlers and uh, very, uh, as you can say, decorated. So, yeah, lovely, lovely to see you clear and hopefully I'll have you back later. Thank you very much Eugene. Thanks everyone and stay tuned for the next game.
lights off. Morning everyone and welcome to Western Province Cricket Club. And we are watching the BSA Masters, the veteran men pairing at the moment between Fraser and Chalinor. Yeah, Dennis Fraser also known as he was the head coach of South Africa. For those that uh, know him. South Africa's head coach and uh, Mark Bevis Chalano used to skip uh, Golan's A in the district side for many, many years. He's had his first year in the veterans this year. So, yeah, it's, it's going to be an exciting game to watch. Now, good to see we're opening up with 122 people watching, 23, 123. So clear, it's quite exhausting to sit, <laughs> sit and watch polls <laughs> <laughs> and commentate uh, for hours on end. That's for sure, but I guess at least we get uh, good seats to, uh, to a couple of really, really good games. Yes, I think this game will just get better and better as the two get comfortable on the rink. And we've seen some good games on this rink over the, well, yesterday and this morning. Can't really complain about their lines so far. <laughs> no, they've chucked them around the middle. It indicates very good lines. Yeah, look like Mark. Mark will open up the first hit with a count of one. And Mark also recently just changed his balls. He used to play with professionals and I think he's gone to the pro tiers now so I think between the two of them you'll have a bit more of a bend. Jens Fraser playing with the Drake's Pro Professional, the extreme grip. And Fraser will obviously be playing a little bit of a tighter line compared to Mark. See a little bit of cloud cover coming over again now. It's just cooling down again. So yeah, that's obviously wouldn't help the greens to speed up as quick as it would when the sun's out. You almost want the wind to blow a little bit more and get a little bit more heat on the greens to quicken things up, dry it out a bit. Yeah, Mark opening up with a very good ball there again. Yeah, it's difficult when people walk past and they greet you and you're busy commentating and you, you, can't, like, you can't greet them. It's quite, quite awkward. It's, it's like lip reading. Yes. Or try and mumble to them to go. Hello, I'm trying to be polite. Yeah. It's not rude on you. Rude intentionally. <laughs> Uh, seems to just be struggling a little bit with the weight. He's not playing. He's playing good lines. <laughs> uh, it's something interesting that the men's uh, opening the district says. Uh, Tian's told me they're looking at maybe sending a, a veterans team, SA veterans team to um, Cyprus. Which is quite interesting and exciting for the ones that maybe get a second bite to become a, a national bowler. <laughs> I'm sure we might see some some of the some new faces, mm. people that have never had the chance opportunity when they were in their prime. I think it's very exciting. Gives everyone that that opportunity, as you say. Especially people, some, sometimes they take up bowls later on in life and then you kind of miss that sort of younger period to maybe play well at the open level. Yeah, it's, I think it's a good initiative and 
very exciting for some of the vets uh, looking to make make it to that level. <laughs> yeah, so Tien's played a, a great shot there uh, to pull the white. He was two down. I'm sure Tien's. He's done enough to get another. Looks like Mark's ball's second shot on the one on the left. Yeah, just the one. That's a nice uh, tight start. One all after the first two ends. And it'll also find, I think, uh, the men's, men's game will go a little bit quicker. <laughs> Yesterday it was, I think, the, the game that I streamed only took about an hour and 20 minutes. And the ladies this morning it was uh, a bit longer than that. <laughs> but you generally find that the guys they kick the ball so much quicker in, you know, in the singles. Maybe it's because they got bigger feet that they can just <laughs> <laughs> and they grab the mat and off they go. And they off don't, they go. They don't waste the hum. No mucking around. They just get straight up to it. Yeah. Just checking the length. Throw the strain a short one. Oh, they're calling the umpire to measure the legal length. For those who don't know, the legal length is 23 meters. So the umpire will come out uh, with a long tape and get the marker to hold it down at the mat, and then she'll check the distance of the jack. From the front. front of the mat. Whoops, you've got to hold on to that. Yeah. A yeah. little bit of wind picking up now. I'm sure. Won't be, won't be disturbing to the players. It's just a gentle breeze. Yeah. I'm by indicating that it's about half a meter over the legal length. <coughs> and once again, uh, please keep the comments coming in and we'll try and keep up and, and answer questions and things like that. Ah, Gareth Stewart saying morning. I think uh, this is exactly what Tien's wanted, the shorter length. And I think clear on the short ends we might see a little bit of tighter heads. Mm -hmm. it's, it's easier to play with consistent weight on the shorter length, especially if the green's running at about 11 and a half, 12 seconds. It's like we saw in the previous game, uh, uh, the one lady went long. Made it uh, upset the links and the weight a bit, but uh, yeah, certainly more consistency with the shorter jack. Absolutely, yeah. The ball reacted quite funny as it came to a stop there. Yeah. Well, just overcorrecting there, weights, weight was still pretty good. Playing with very good weight there. Brilliant weight that. It's very good ball, but now he gives Mark that uh, I think you would say he's framed it a bit, so Mark should be up and up and at it a little bit more. Yep. That's what he's trying. Decent oh, track there. For it. Yeah, he's, yeah just, well he's just framed it. Unfortunately, Mark played a good shot. I think Tienz will still be looking to come down on the back end. I don't quite know if he'll get back to the white on that forehand. Yeah, still playing the back end. We're looking to it's just Oh now it might be oh, Marcus still indicating one. Oh, 
Oh, sun just came out again. Mark with the opportunity here to try and pick up more than one. I think he's done enough. <coughs> Mark will be looking for these opportunities to try and pick out multiple shots. It does look from here that could just be in. Yeah. Mark also just uh, last weekend won, won the, I think, the Poland men's veteran singles. There's three of them in the Boland that actually always have a good go at each other between <laughs> Mark Bevers, Chalano, Stoffel Lambrecht and uh, Kali van der Meve. They're the three that always contains the, the singles trophies. Especially now that they all three in the veterans, it's, it's going to be exciting to see in the upcoming years how that rivalry goes. It's an incredible level of competition getting through to the veterans. And all three of them are playing in the SA Men's Veterans Masters, so... Yeah, yes. Thank you, Gareth. Um, no apologies needed. I know you're always uh, used to hearing Eugene's smashing voice on commentary. <laughs> Somehow they roped me into doing it a bit as well, but I'm enjoying it so far. And thank you for the congratulations on the ID achievement. Really do appreciate it. So opening up with a very good ball again there. Tian's definitely starting to find his range. Yeah, it's been interesting. Uh, it's most of the games. It's uh, obviously we stream on the same rink, session after session. And uh, most of the people prefer to play this, the back end going well around the clock. Mm. Seems to be the two better hands to play. Responded with a great ball there, drawing. Tins down on a decent track again. I think he's just played it with too much. Yeah, Mark just, I think Mark has that two back yellow woods in mind there. Reason for changing his hand. Eugene, you're getting a big good morning from Keith Oral. Yeah. Coming from a sunny Durban, he says. We could do with a little bit more sun here. Yeah, it does. I've had the pleasure to see Keith again now when we were down in Durban. I grew up in front of him. Uh, so, you know, it was lovely seeing him and a couple of the old uh, the people I uh, used to grow up in front of. Uh, <laughs> good morning, Keith. Uh, hope you're going to enjoy the day with us. Enjoy the commentary and some good balls. Yes. Keith, Keith making an interesting statement saying that it uh, seems like a lot more bowlers bowling with white coloured balls. Uh, yeah. I think it is true actually, now that he mentions it. Yes, yes. quite a number of white, white sets around this weekend and the one game two rings from them both are playing with white so We've got nine white balls on the rim, <laughs> <laughs> including the jack. He made a f he made an interesting statement yesterday. He says, "How do you mark white balls?" I said, and "Told him about the chalk pins and whatnot." <laughs> and he said, "Someone once said, no, they must mark it with chalk." So, yeah. So I said, "Maybe a business opportunity for him to create a little charcoal pin." <laughs> I like that idea. Just a pen piece, otherwise your <laughs> yes. hands uh, would look a bit messy, especially with white shorts. <laughs> That would be a, a bit of a disaster. Yeah. Now back to the action. Tien's just played. Tien's played a brilliant ball on his back end, pulling the white there, holding two or three shots. And like I said, I think this game will just get better and better as 
as it, as it progresses. Monk is surely down on a decent track, just needs the weight. Yeah, it's unlucky there. Had it with decent weight. Might still be two or three down there. Yeah, I think he turns might be holding at least two or three, probably be closer to three if he can beat that blue ball. Yeah, I think he's I was just yeah, still trying to still playing it on the back end. Just needs to get up to his yellow balls. In fact, I think he might just need to beat the blue ball, but he's spread it with a little too much weight and outside the line. Well, more weight than line, actually. Oh, yeah. It's taken two out. A little bit of a measure on the third, I think. Fast approaching the thousand mark early, early in the morning. Total number of viewers. Yeah, I'm currently up to 171 watching at the moment. Welcome to those who've just tuned in. And yeah, so welcome to those who've just tuned in. Tune in at a very good moment. Uh, well, a very good match. The game that's being played now. Tian's Fraser, Mark Perry's Challenge. We've already seen some exciting stuff in the first couple of ends. Yeah, me and Claire will try and keep you entertained as much as possible. If we talk too much at times, please uh, let us know. Not always easy getting that balance between stating the obvious and <laughs> saying nothing at all, eh, UT? <laughs> yes. And those little awkward moments of silence now and then when you commentate. <laughs> the brain works over time to think about what, what should I say next. <laughs> <laughs> but sometimes it's okay. Just running about two two yards past the white there. <coughs> Markers are just over the weight. I think general will also find that the men will. I mean, we'll play their first balls over the weight, rather than be short. <coughs> well, it's that age-old saying, eh? it's always uh, easier to adjust from that ball that's just through, coming back to the jack, than trying to add on that weight. Yeah, more so even when the game's not as quick. Both of them almost matching their, their first and second balls. <laughs> yeah, just both overcorrecting the weight. Now oh, there's that forehand that seems like it's just it holds up right until the end and then comes back. Last ball down the shot. Mark might get a little bit more of a bend on that and seeing that he's playing with the Proteus. See his ball might just...
Ja. Binnenlijn, ja. Ja, beautiful weight on that. You also see the, uh, the names of the players are on the stickers. Uh, that close up view, you can see Mark Bevis Chalinor. Chalino taking the lead off to the fourth or fifth in. Four three. Yeah, as I said, it, it, they play a bit quicker. They really threw five ends in the first set. Oh, the way this is walking with some coffee. <laughs> and breakfast. Service with a smile. Yes. Thank you, waitress. <laughs> Still haven't had a cup of coffee for the morning. My day's only getting started now. <laughs> Last two hours been a bit of a blur, Eugene. It's okay. I've got your back here. Ten spotting a really good ball. Ball holding the one. Mark looking to see how he can get in here. Unfortunately, he's just playing it under the weight. Next game we'll try and get two ladies on the on the mic that they can have some lovely discussions on the, on the ladies games. <laughs> Should we start looking for them now? Yes, I'm taking a break after this session. Oh. Oh. Mark played a good one there, might have made a couple. Tienz is holding one with that side yellow ball and walk. Tienz has just played it outside the line. running through there so I think it's a good measure between those two balls. I'm just going to step away for a short moment. That's not a problem, and Eugene. People getting out too much breakfast. You might just make them jealous. <laughs> oh. Ah, brilliant! We're up to 192 views currently. Come on, guys! Let's see if we can get over that 200 mark. This is a really good game that we. Or watching. Mark are making very sure here.
Jen's picking up the one. Okay, as we go into the seventh end, it's for all. Jean predicted before this game started that it would be a very tight contest, and we've already seen that so far. Mark's first ball about three quarters of a meter behind. Turns his last ball down is definitely shot now. Cloud's starting to lift here a little bit more with Western Province Creek Club, a little bit more wind. Hopefully that will dry out the greens a little bit quicker. For those that have joined, Eugene's saying the greens are running at about 11 and a half, 12 at the moment. and start still holding that one shot. And now Tiens is holding two. Those watching, please keep the comments coming through. Always love to answer a question or two or have a little banter. That engagement is so important on the streaming on the streaming platforms. James Fraser picking up two there. And he takes a 6 4 lead after seven ends. So this becomes a very, very critical end now for Mark. Gene has joined us back after his uh, good-looking breakfast there. Yeah. Are you feeling a bit better there, Eugene? Yes, much better. No, Energy my, levels up. Yes, and my day can start up officially. <laughs> yeah, I've just been some good games going up, up in the in the Open Masters. Um, interesting results yesterday. Seen some incredible balls in the open masters as well.
There we go, Eugene, over the 200 viewer mark currently. Again, yeah, we're approaching 1,000 thousand views for the morning. Tian seems to be very good with his third and fourth ball. Just makes that adjustment. I think he's, he's done it again. <laughs> you know, just brings his experience. Think about every ball you play and try and make that little bit of an adjustment if you need to. <coughs> Also down on a decent line here. Yeah. Just run a yard past the white. Good ball. He's now holding a better one, I think. He was holding, I think he just turned his. Original shot ball out. Nevertheless, Mark needs to play a, a very good shot here to try and stay in the set. There's only one end left after this in the first set. And if he drops, if he drops a one year, you need you will need to pick up a four to to win the set and a three to peel the set. Yeah, I think the shot that needs to be played here is, is quite obvious. It's, that last ball is not a toucher, and it's obviously a spotting rule. Um, I think you would agree if he, he's going to be up and at this, maybe more so. I think I prefer to see him play that on the forehand because his ball's protected on the forehand. Yeah. He doesn't want to be under the yellow. I thought he would be playing that with much more weight. I almost wanted to make the comment that this ball wouldn't be short, but I'm glad I didn't say that. Because Maybe he was just trying to play onto the yellow to pop the white back, but. But he still would have needed a, a decent bit of weight on that, but more than he had on it. The saying always goes, it's easier to play the game from the <laughs> bank. Uh, absolutely, with a cup of coffee in hand. Yes, <laughs> and an armchair. <laughs> <laughs> Very interesting comment from Craig Boerter. Eugene, you might be able to set, shed some more light on this. Just making note that the marker in this game is not using a box measure. Um, his comment is he would have thought that it would be mandatory for markers to be using box measures. Yes, I think that the uh, rule applies in Australia and England. Um, I'm not, not, not too sure if, if it's mandatory to use it in South Africa but I'm sure they'll get to a point where that needs to be implemented. Yeah, I must say I can't use those old school measures. I get the shakes at the end. <laughs> <laughs> it's much easier to get the base down on the on the ground with the box measure. Brilliant guys, we've just gone over the thousand views for the day mark. That's very good. That's brilliant. 212 people watching. I'm not sure that'll increase as the weekend progresses. Yeah, so we, yesterday we we had in excess of 120 spectators for the start of the tournament. So, and I'm already seeing a lot of new faces here today. So, I'm pretty sure by final time tomorrow we'll be we'll sitting with almost 200 spectators. <laughs> Yeah, it's really great to see the vibe here and more people coming in to watch my recommendations. If you're in the area, get here nice and early. You can also secure a decent parking spot. Yes. <laughs> yeah.
Mark uh, playing a very good ball there, Pianis. Looks like he's, he's kind of just played it under and doesn't have a weight. Well, to get back to the comment of Craig, I think I'll put my feelers out there and try and see if, if there's any ruling on that in South Africa. I know in Australia, I'm pretty sure in Australia you, you have to use the box measure. I mean, it makes sense. You see them popping up the jack and the uh, bowls with the rubbers, so you know, the box measure just brings that extra bit of stability into that part of the game. Yes, yeah. A lot of people prefer to actually use the, the bullet measure over yes. the box measure, but yeah, I think for safety's sake it's better to use the box measure. Just running into that last bowl of tents. So, that's the first set done. Tents Fraser has taken the first set. Set is 7 5 to Tians Fraser. Um, <coughs> about to start the second set. Uh, obviously, Mark needs to win this one to force the tie break. Just once again, a little recap of how the scoring works and, and the conditions of play. Uh, so, basically, it's two sets of nine ends. Each uh, set counts in one point and one point for the winner of the game. Obviously, it's not combined shots over the two sets. They are separately calculated or winner of each set gets a point. And then uh, if you've won in straight sets, you'll also obviously be the winner of the game. And if it's a uh, set apiece, there's a three and tiebreaker, which is worked uh, over amount of shots accumulated and not one point for the winner of each end. So yeah, so basically if you score nine shots in, or eight shots in two ends, uh, you wouldn't have to play the third end. So. Not getting it close early, again, early in the second set. <coughs> That's a very good opening ball for Mark. You'd want to start off this the set positively. Oh, Tiens has matched him. Yeah, great Rick. response there from Tiens. Once again, it just looks like whenever they play the backhands, uh, the end the heads seem to be a little bit tighter and uh, you see more consistency. Yeah. Tens holding two there. Yep. Mark needs to be overweight a little bit. He's dry. Oh, it's just. Uh, yeah. Mark doesn't want to get himself into trouble early in this set. And just make his, his life a lot more difficult. I wouldn't say it make his life difficult. It's just. <laughs> he'll start losing hope of winning the game. <laughs> yeah, 
play that with throwing weight, he might just sneak inside there. He's got, he just got hooked up on his short ball there. Yeah, two to tens. off to a good start in the second set. After taking the first set, seven five. Which is this game is going a lot quicker than the first one. <laughs> it's crazy how quick it goes. <laughs> kind of look yeah. up and suddenly you're on second set, second end. Yeah. It's just it, it flies by and. Uh, Obviously, you can only, well, I wouldn't say a maximum of, but I think a maximum of 22 ends is what you can have. Obviously, if you level scores in after three ends in the tiebreaker, you'll have to play a sudden death end. So you won't see more than 22 ends played. Whereas in the past in singles, people know how long that can go on. Yes. Going into 50 ends and. Yes, 30 plus ends. Yeah. This format also makes it much easier to to commentate on because you don't have to sit here for three, four hours <laughs> watching the same two people play. And I think it also keeps the viewers more, um, like how can I say, interested in watching because it's not two or three hours that they need to sit down and kind of watch people roll ball, balls up and down the green. <laughs> it's more exciting. Okay, Marcus just played that. Oh, come down with decent weight. Just a couple of ends now, Marcus. Just, just failed to get the result that he was looking for. Much prefer that bowl from Mark. I feel, Eugene, you've got a lot more experience in bowls than I do, but I just feel like he needs to just be a little bit more attacking here, just try and change the momentum. You just feel like Tienz is almost just on top and having the freedom just to kind of find that weight and just draw and draw and draw. Yeah, especially with that last bowl, I think you're looking to just be more, like I always say, up and at it. Change his hand. Uh, he wouldn't want to be missing this. Down on a decent track. We know that hand kicks with a little bit of weight. Yeah, oh, there we go. He's gotten a good result there. Mark indicating it's two shots there to Mark. Plenty of space for the answer to draw. to be down on a decent track, he just needs to have good weight here, which he's... Putting a jog in after it, must like yeah. it. I think yeah. he's just drawn number one there. <laughs> well, if anything, Mark can still pull the white, so I think he can try and kind of be up to the ball. Played that a little bit too conservative. Mm -hmm. He had everything in his favour. He could have pushed that uh, tennis ball out or looked for the little trail. Oh, yeah, the best back would have made three if he collected the white. He set the ball and pushed it out of there, take its place, he would have made three. Just, just played it over the draw. <coughs> it's interesting, it's two ends now we've seen. We've seen Marker. Uh, Kind of, in our opinion, just play with just too little weight. Mm. But then again, we're sitting here and he's playing the game, so. <laughs> <laughs> Who are we to judge? It's no bad judgment. I think he's 
process with that the short selection is just kind of uh, like you said earlier giving tears a free and he's not worried at all because he's not he's not up and at it and trying to change mm. things uh, Tins just looks like he's in his groove now um, you just want him to have some some little doubt at the back of his mind about what Mark could do and Definitely, and Mark's also not opting to play that forehand. Yeah. Yeah. Tien's first ball, about a meter, meter and a half short of the, of the jack. Bit of weight there from turns, a little bit short. Green bit, green bit. Um, Mark, uh, falling under the line, but still getting the shot. Looking to promote one of his balls here. If he holds, he'll get onto onto that blue ball. A lot of percentage in the shot that he's playing. Oh, he's played it exactly like mm -hmm. he wanted to. That's a key. He's played with good weight and percentage shots always give you that added advantage. Not down on a bad line, yeah. Once again, so unlucky. Gets onto the ball, it just doesn't quite stick around. <laughs> Turn still holding that one. <laughs> yeah. I think so. I think he's still just trying to replicate his previous shot. Yeah, down on a decent line again. Oh. The ball just, like I said, the two forehands just seem to, with that little bit of weight, just hang, hang a little bit. Yeah. With the backhands, both backhands is giving you that little bit extra bend. Mark down on a good line again. You can find that yellow ball. Yes, oh, so unlucky weird. once again. See by the reaction <laughs> <laughs> of Mark after he played that ball. So unlucky. Little touch on the white makes three, sits on the oh. volume makes two, and he gets nothing. Yeah, sometimes this game can be cruel. <laughs> cruel, cruel, cruel. The best of times. <laughs> you say sometimes it's cool but doesn't reflect the game. Um, name of the markers, Jonathan Cochrane. A lot of you might know he is. <laughs> I think he used to play at Monaghan in the past. That's oh, correct. Mid member. That's correct. Mr. Bowles? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Back to the game. <laughs> Lost three and sense, he's just come up a bit short there with his his first ball. Oh, Mark. Oh, brilliant. Mark played a good ball there. <coughs> Excuse me. Jensen on the forehand. Yeah, he's just 
just didn't get enough of that little kick that that hand provides. <coughs> you see, but the thing about that blast ball is he set himself up well for his next one. Yeah, he was nice and positive in that over it, not yeah. short. And the way I know Tian is that he, he thrives on little adjustments. So I can assure you that this next one might be very close, if not right on top. He's got a very square setup, straight down the line, top of delivery. And we're going to might see a little bit too much of that kick. Yeah. close and allowed himself to play that more attacking shot. This game's absolutely this game's flying past that. It's already almost four ends gone in the second set. And we've been here for not even an hour. It's crazy. It's pretty much in Tienza's favour here with his last ball. He's having a full run at it. He's played it. Oh, that was very interesting. He narrowly missed with his first two and he's changed his weight completely. I kind of liked, liked him sticking with the same weight he played on his... Uh, exactly. On his third ball. A little drag on that. Um, he's given Mark an opportunity here to make more than one, mm. and he's done just that. that. So Mark kind of gets himself back into the set here. <coughs> Score now 4 2 after, after four ends. Five ends left in the second set. Now and then you'll hear some comments from from elsewhere as people walking past and they want to talk to us and they don't realize that the mic is alive. <laughs> <laughs> and then he asked me, but what do I know about balls to be commentating? <laughs> Just yeah. in case no one heard that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nice to have a laugh now and then sitting behind the mic, it can't be all dull and down. See, I've got a bit of bit more views that have tuned in. Uh, it's been a very good game this between Mark and Tiens. I've seen some nice shots played. And uh, yeah, once again welcome to those people that have just tuned in. We hope to see you for the rest of the weekend. I think me and Clee's going to take a bit of a break after this one. Uh, Your data running out there, Eugene. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, getting a nice fortunate little rub of that short ball. Just taking off that extra little bit of weight he had on. But at least it was positive, it is. Yes. Up. Yeah, so it's pretty much alive still. Mm. It's interesting to see now that uh, a couple of running shots affects Tiense's mm. consistency on the draw. Because that often happens if you've had a good drawing game. You tend to play a weighted shot and then your weight goes a bit, a little bit. Oh, markers are coming up short. William Gray saying, uh, Lady Luck is definitely not uh, in Mark's favour at the moment. Yeah, 100% right. A game yeah. of millimetres, and we've seen that so far. A couple of shots he's played, he's just, just <laughs> caught in the holes and the, 
<coughs> the roughs have been going against him, but yeah, that happens on the best of days. Huh? <laughs> Yes, it has to. It also comes down to that mental strength, not letting it get you, not letting letting you get frustrated by it. Yes. Oh. Okay, having a little rush of blood there. <laughs> I've seen each end now in the last two ends. Two and San Mark having a little bit of a, a hefty go for some reason. You just see his Tians walks up the green, you try and he swings his arm to try and visualize that type of weight and type of shot he needs to play. It always helps focusing on on the shot before you get to the mat. He's just down on a decent track here, yeah? just don't know if he's going to get back with that weight. So Mark scores another one. Yeah. The set definitely still alive. Yeah, very much so. 4 3. Advantage Tians Fraser. After having won the first set 7 5. Interesting, we've seen this in the previous game and I'm sure we're seeing it again. The person that's behind behind in the set in the second in the second set opting to go for a longer, longer leg. Mm -hmm. Paid off in the first, previous game. And <laughs> that's a super start after that length change there by Mark. I think he's just picked up that Tians has been playing a couple of short balls and he he's gonna want to try and capitalize on that. Veterans are obviously, well, they've been playing bowls for many, many years. <laughs> so they've got a lot of tricks up their sleeve. That's what always still makes them very formidable opponents when you play against them. And again, when, even I never stop learning. I learn every, every now and then you learn something new. I think that's also what's so great about having all the streaming is that um, even when you're not at the games, you can still watch and be learning from shot selection and changes of length. 100%. And the previous bowl of Mark, uh, I think, turned the head slightly in favour of Tienz. He just needs to get a decent result. I can assure you that Tienz won't be looking to be short from the way the head's lying. Definitely has the weight. Oh. The thing is, he played that ball with very good weight because he's not conceding more than more than one shot. Mark indicating one to Mark. Opting to come and have a look at the head, yeah. Might be a slight possibility of something if, if he if he's brave. Seeing that that forehand actually kicks a little bit. Can't see him even if he kind of gets his own ball onto the white. Might just look to promote his ball on the forehand. If he slips inside and gets to the yellow, he might he might make four of it. Obviously, Tian still has a ball to come. Mark opting to put in a back ball. 
rather than take the chance. <coughs> Which might pay off in the end. Spectators are streaming thick and fast now. Every time I look up, I see new faces entering the venue. Tens is definitely playing it with a decent amount of weight. I don't think he'll get back. That'll be one to mark. It'll be all square after six ends. Was all square clear. Yeah, another tight seat here. Yeah, it's uh, like I said, it makes it nice, it's, it's interesting. It's not a runaway. <laughs> Maybe uh, the cameras add some edit, uh, add some added pressure. <laughs> you think? <laughs> well, absolutely, I suppose that's always in, in the back of your mind. I don't want to be humiliated in front of the camera. <laughs> so kind of give it your all. <laughs> also have the SS selectors around this weekend. Looking at some of the talent. See Neil Burkett around, Johan Duplessis, Jessica Henderson. <laughs> Pam Lantau is down, mm. Trish Young, all getting a glimpse of the youngsters and talent in the open monsters. It's a bit of, bit of first ball now by Tienz. It always kind of helps if you get that first ball straight in front of the white, you take the colour of the white away, so it makes your weight adjustment a bit more difficult. Not like when you're playing in a team, you can ask your skip to give you a foot or something, yeah? Yes. You can ask the marker, but he's not allowed it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, markers. That's a brilliant reply, but marker just don't think he's he stopped in time. At least it's behind, it gives him some options now. Yeah. It's much fancy to play his back end yet to kind of just get to that blue ball. Oof. Just walk that straight off the mat. You all know what happens when you do that. <laughs> you either narrow very wide or short. Have you encountered that problem there? <laughs> You're not staying on the mat? Not too much. I tend to stay on the mat for a bit. And I do like to have a little jog after my bowl every now and again. But I try and make sure that uh, I stay down for as long as possible. Yeah, that helps just to keep a consistent delivery going. Absolutely. Short tens, even with his experience, just coming off the mat there slightly quick. And, uh, and he went under the line. So obviously, we're trying to adjust it. I'm sure, you'll see him stay down nice and spread it down a bit of track. I still think he's a bit narrow. Mm. slightly under it. Wait, not bad. Oh, he finished check eye. Yeah. Talking about that lady luck again. 
We had it with such good weight, it <coughs> doesn't get onto the bowl or the white. Now, I think we could have got a little trail on that. It would have swung the set in Mark's favour. Tien's going to get onto the blue bowl. It can make it yeah. incredibly difficult for. And through the taking a 5 4 lead in the set. We need two ends to go. Yeah, this game has, like I said, flown past us. <laughs> <laughs> We've been here just more than an hour. <laughs> So for those people watching, please, uh, you can just if you want to ask questions or you want to leave a comment, <coughs> please do so. It uh, helps us to interact with the viewers, and also if somebody needs to know something. We'll do our best to answer your questions. And, uh, once again, I have to say thank you to the sponsors. They always generally sponsor, generously sponsor bowls. <coughs> Give them a call if you need anything from them. Your short eh? Yeah. Okay, they're clear, you're gonna be silent. <laughs> <laughs> Why am I talking too much? <laughs> no, 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 you're entertaining us. Oh. <laughs> <coughs> the right throat. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. In, in gone a bit loose a little bit. Maybe get in. I wouldn't, I wouldn't know if these guys still get nervous, but <laughs> yeah. it looks like a little bit of a nervous end. Tien's tries to draw number one there. See the mark is indicating he's holding two. Well, mark definitely needs to get in here with his. Third ball. Oh. No one doesn't want to be dropping a three here. And the set's all but gone. Tien's on a good track again if his weight's good. Oh. And it sure yeah, is. That's a great ball. That's a brilliant ball. That is, it's a good ball, and a, but it kind of forces Mark to now play this. Forehand. Yeah. A little bit oh, more direct. He's not far away. Yeah, just going to cut under. So we wouldn't, we wouldn't. We're not going to see a tiebreaker. Second game in a row. And so the worst teams can do now is peel the second set. Or draw the second set. That would still give him the win overall. Exactly. Because he picked up that first set, so. I thought as much. Marco was quick to say that he was mm -hmm. holding three before the players considered he actually went to the board to put it up already. Now they're asking for a measure saying it's possibly only two shots. As a marker you never do that. Wait until the players 
Sometimes it can frustrate the players if markers do that. So, mm-hmm. if I can give you any advice for the people out there that's uh, still learning uh, a lot of different aspects about the game, as a marker, please don't preconceive shots before the players have agreed to. And it was only so two shots. <coughs> Always better than just to show that potentially there's a measure or it's two. And I know you want the marker to rather say it's two and the mm-hmm. measure. At least then, if you want to see it, you can come down to the end and see for yourself. <laughs> me in the past you think you're lying a comfortable two three shots you get there and it's only one yeah and you kind of it kind of changes the type of shots that you would have played if so we're down to the last in the second set against Fraser seven four up just needs to do damage control here Won this game comfortably. Mark we've done on a good line again on this forehand of his. It's exactly the kind of open and clear there. That's a great ball from Mark. Mark just needs to find another three of those. <laughs> we've seen it happen in this game so many times. We're on that last end, you. Oh. That's a very good no. response. Don't need to be short here, Marky. Don't give yourself any chance. No. Unfortunately, he's played it short. So that kind of. That last ball kind of takes away the opportunity to score four. will now just be playing to try and attack the white a little bit more. Yep. <coughs> Mark, not, Mark not really with too much options here. Yeah? Yellow ball still in before. Even if he gets onto that other yellow, yellow ball, he'll only score three shots, which would, which would give him half a point. And not enough to take it into a tiebreaker. Yeah. yeah, unfortunately, that second ball of Mark cost him a really good opportunity to potentially pick up the four to win the skin. Now there's an opportunity if he yeah. sees the shot. That little, little forehand trundle, one, two, he might get all three of the yellow balls and stay for the fourth one. I think that's the only shot I can see. Mm. So he's gonna, he has to get that front ball to get the one, two, and he might get the other yellow as well. To any shot. Let's see if Lady Luck's on Mark's side this time. Yeah. Okay, what's the deck? Mm. Mark playing this last ball on the forehand. No, it's n- yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah, I think he just needed that other ball first. 
So that wraps up the second session for the morning. Tian's Fraser winning it in straight sets. Um, Tian's uh, going good in this tournament so far. We'll see if we can give, give you a bit of live updates on some of the sections later, if we can get that going. Claire, thanks for joining us in commentary for the second session. Thank you very much, Eugene. Good fun um, and a good game of bowls, that's for sure. Yes, uh, and I'm pretty sure we're going to see another two good games of bowls, but uh, we might see. I might see you back in commentary a little bit later. I'm going to have a break now. But stay tuned for the next session, which will be the veterans' ladies up again. So, thank you for tuning in, and uh, see you a bit later.
Good afternoon to those viewers that are tuning in to watch this uh, fourth and final session of day two of the men's SA Veterans Masters. We welcome you back to Western Promise Cricket Club this afternoon. Uh, the third game that we will be streaming for the day and also the last. Uh, two very renowned bowlers across the country in the Rudy Jacobs and the Robbie Pickett. They've just finished off their trial ends. So we're all set and ready to go. Most of you will also know Rudy Jacobs as uh, one of the SA coaches. He's also been a former pro player himself, retired pro player. And uh, yeah, uh, he's playing, he's up against Robbie Pickett. That's uh, from Sables. Robbie used to be down in Cape Town for a while. Uh, very much used to the conditions down in Cape Town. It's a lovely afternoon, a little bit of a breeze blowing. Not much wind to talk about and oh, banks are, are packed. Uh, a lot of spectators are in excess of 100. And as we get away, I hope you guys enjoy the afternoon with me. I'll try and keep you entertained. Please leave a couple of comments as we go along, ask questions. I'll be happy to assist if it is possible. Anyway, let's get to the action and enjoy the afternoon. with Drake Sprite Professionals and uh, Rudy Jacobs with the white Drake Sprite Pro 50s. Just to give you clarity on the type of balls uh, they're playing with. And both of them are using size 3s. Here Getting one cuss. Robbie was holding two and uh, Rudy draws the shot. Robbie didn't get that one away nicely. He turned his back on it immediately. Now the water, you okay? Yes. Now the coming up off of me to show it He's down a bit of line here. There's that little kick that we've been seeing the whole weekend on that end. Let's see what the marker says. front of the camera at the moment so you can't really see what's happening. It's a, it's a measure between the, the two balls there.
using a little box measure. Yep. Just one shot to Robbie Pickett on the first end. Just to recap again, if you've tuned in for the first time, the games in the SA Masters is played over two sets of nine ends. And if it's one set to piece, there will be a tiebreaker of three ends where score is to count and not the ends. And it's just to clarify the, the format to you. An opening ball in the second end. The British ball, unfortunately, just getting stuck on that. On that line, yeah, very good weight. Even Robbie's ball sitting up on the line a little bit there. The wind is slightly blowing from right to left on your screen at the moment. So we probably see the ball hold up a little bit on the on the back end coming towards the clubhouse. He's just played a good weight under the line this time. Indicating that Rob is holding two shots there. Mm -hmm. A little bit of a fortunate result there. But really, his weight was good under the line, and he got a little ride of that ball. Part of the game happens. We've got our viewer medals up for the day to 2,462. 2, 127 people watching at the moment. He's played well, I think he's just come up a little bit short to count. That'll be one to Robbie Pickett. <coughs> ah, apologies to Rudy Jacobs.
playing with decent weight there. Rudy is a type of bowler, he always plays with good weight. He'll be persistent with his forehand. He's played it well. It's a great opener there from Robbie Pickett. Decent track again, just slightly over the weight. Quite sure it looks like Robbie's holding the one. I say it's a glorious afternoon down here at Cricket Club in the beautiful sunny Cape Town. It's not very often that you get a, a full weekend of decent weather, and I must say we've we've struck it lucky this weekend. Uh, tomorrow should also be another glorious day. A little bit of rain on the cards for tomorrow, but nothing that will in the all South Africa from finishing the competition. And it's apparently predicted for later the afternoon. See Rudy Jacobs down with a little bit of weight there on his forehand. There's a decent effort. Just needed to stay up and hit the white to the ball. Coming down to see if there's any other option of maybe turning the one into a two or three. Pretty sure he'll just try and get down to his last ball and turn it in for shot or for another shot at least. Helps for the sun. Uh, brilliant ball there by Robbie. I think he's holding too. It should, uh, off the three ends in the first set, Robbie Picker three, Rudy Jacobs one. I'm sure as this game progresses, we'll see the ends. Getting better and better, both of these oaks like, like to play with play with weight as well. Very two two very good draws. They love their little running shot every now and then. Just to get to his back and back to the club. It's a little bit more tricky with the breezes afternoon. Can't really call it wind as such, but uh, certainly a breeze that has a little bit of an effect on the ball. You see.
see that the ball's just sticking on that line. that last ball the wind just dropped all together and the ball managed to make its way back down to the to the jack Benji Brudy is going to make it down. He's playing it just over the weight because any contact on the shot ball should be in his favour. Robbie would certainly just try and get to that white ball before Brudy gets a hold of the shot ball. Yeah, Robbie's just played it over the weight line. Pretty spot on there. Yeah. Really opting for the little run on the back end. Well, it's just pretty much a weighted shot, and he's, he's played it underneath, and it could be one to Robbie Picketh. After four ends, we've got Robbie Pickers on four and Rudy Jacobs on one. Some very decent balls being played in and around Western Province Cricket Club today. Been able to get some get some more action. Watched a couple of the games in the Open Masters and the Juniors. Pretty high level, high standard of balls being played. With two greens there that the Open Masters is being played on, uh, running about a second and a half to two seconds quicker. And uh, haven't had any complaints about the greens yet. Just this afternoon, the breeze might make it a little bit more tricky. For those that are not used to playing in the wind. You see there. It's that forehand with a little bit of the wind blowing across across the rink. Cannot afford to miss. Positive side, so wind does punish you a little bit. And really was thinking to himself, let's let's take the iffy line on the four and away from it, stick to the back end, and there's a little bit more of a bend. See Robbie Pickett with the blue stickers and Rudy Oko with the red stickers. Robbie just running that full meter, meter, meter and a half past the white.
looks to be done on a decent track. Just come up shy, about a foot short of the white. Once again, feel free to ask some questions and leave some comments. And a beautiful ball there by Robbie Pickett. Two down and draws number one. One shot to Robbie Pickett, which takes him 5-1 up after 5 ends. 4 ends left in this first set. Check on the back end. Just running about a foot post, post the jack there. Once again on a decent line, it's all about good weight and getting back to the white. Oh, just drifted a meter past. Well, it's always better to have a ball just behind the white instead of a meter short of the white. But really this time on a, on a decent line. Managed to get the shot there. Come on, A little bit more noisy here today, and more spectators out supporting the local boys and girls. Your chairs in the background, and hopefully more so tomorrow. When we get the, we're streaming the the last two sessions, and then the final after that. The finals will all be played on one rink or one green at, at least across uh, six different rinks. Very much looking forward to see who comes out tops in the various sections. Uh, we just play that on the whitey side there. Needed to get down to the white ball there. Uh, really with a little bit of an, of an opportunity here to score a multiple count. Really off on that. Just don't know if he's going to get down to that ball. It's a, Decent effort. Robbie conceding the one shot there. So it's five. Two of the six ends. Three ends left here in this first set of nine.
through the arc up to a good line there with this opening bolt. Just uh, pulling about two meters short there. Also coming down on a decent track here. Yeah. Looks to have very good weight. Yeah. Pretty good opening ball there by Robbie Pickett. New Hawkeye's opting to play it on the forehand. He gets that little kick that we've been seeing. Be very close. Just miss it. Keeps his bowl alive there. Try and set up a similar type of shot. Robbie coming up a meter short there. Jacob's playing a great ball there. Two down, turns out Robbie's shot ball, forcing, forcing him onto the forehand. Jacob's down on a decent line again, you know, if his weight's good. Try to get all, all the way back. Yeah, another great ball there by Jacob's holding two shots. Probably gets that little kick on that forehand. He's going to be very close to moving the white jerk. Didn't need to get wrecked on his his own ball there. Pretty Jacobs picking up one shot as we move into the eighth end. After seven ends, it's five shots <coughs> to three. The advantage for Robbie Pickett. After seven ends in that first set. Jakob seems to have found that line on that backhand towards the clubhouse. Get down with a good opener again. So, rubbish. So, because it's played with good weight and he just played it under the line. Finishes Jack. Jack I ball. He has found that that line on his back end. Oh. 
Oh, what a great ball there by Robbie Pickett. They're really playing with decent weight to try and sit on that ball. Just playing it outside the line. Obviously that little bit of extra weight makes the ball and a lot longer I think Robbie would be very happy with that ball she's going to make a pretty awkward play with a lot more weight now as you can see there he's given it a oh, seems to be oh, he's played it under we pick up the chance here to score two shots. Leaving with a fair advantage. With one in to play. So it seems to be on a very good line here. Yeah. Oh, Robbie's played well. Oh, I think he's got down. Ball stop just in town. I think there will be two shots to Robbie Pickett. Well, one end left to play in the first set. Yeah, already conceding two shots there. Uh, Robbie Pickett 7 3 up after eight ends in the first set. Uh, what you can do is to peel the first hit and to score a full count of four shots. Holding the one shot there. Up, down with another decent ball. Funny how balls can turn out sometimes. He really seem to have found the lines better and uh, he doesn't have the advantage in the set. And, uh, Robbie came up with a couple of good ones. Just finishing up the last end in the first set here. Yeah. Rudy Jacobs playing a good ball there, he gets number one. He had a little bit more weight, but he's on a very good track here. Yeah. Oh, great ball there by Robbie Pickett. Oh, it's 
shoes, I think they kill that. I'm just going to try and play with a bit more weight here on the forehand. He has a full go at it. Oh, he manages to get rid of that uh, shot ball. I think uh, if the white hasn't moved, it should be one to Rudy, but it's unclear at this uh, moment. Maybe a little bit of a side on angle would be more clear. Oh, never mind, they've conceded. Oh, it looks like Robbie Pickett picked up one there. And that concludes the first set. I think he's just, just managed to touch the white. As he made contact with that ball. Our first set done. Eight shots to three in favor of Robbie Pickett. I see the markers just resetting this flip board. And then we'll commence with the second set. You'll see on the flip board behind the players there they. they if you win a set, they put the one uh, in favor of the winning opponent. <coughs> yeah, 163 viewers live at, at this moment. Not getting any comments coming through. You guys uh, bound to your screens. Ask a couple of questions. Leave a couple of comments. If I may ask you, please also share the live link and like the Facebook page. No, Robbie with a pretty decent opening ball there in the second set, first end of the second set. Really just running a couple of couple of feet past the white. Now Robbie's seemed to have found a, a pretty decent line on that backhand towards the club as well. Bad track here if you can get down to that white. Oh, Rudy Alco's playing a great ball there. Good weight, yeah. yeah. It's coming down on a decent line. Oh, what a great effort there, what I pick it. Just hasn't done enough to get the shot, but uh, a very good ball, nonetheless. Oh, really, Jacobs now probably try and get a little touch on the white on his backhand. I don't think he'll be trying too hard to get back to that set. Oh. I think he sold the shot, still holding the one. It's interesting to see if Robbie play that line again or he opt to go on the forehand to try and play his ball onto the shot ball. That's another option. Uh, I think you will. I think you try and get the shot on his back and if he then misses, he, he deny uh, Rudy Jacobs the op option of pulling the white to pick up a multiple count. Can't really see as the player is in the way. Very valiant effort there from Robbie Pickett, only the one down. 
Well, it really has a, a decent shot to try and play here. He needs to touch that jack a, a foot to make it fall. Getting a little further than running between the jack and the bowl of Robbies. Very decent end from both of them. I think it's the tightest end we've seen in the game so far. But, uh, early advantage in the second set to Rudy Jacobs. Collecting the one shot there. Yeah, so maximum of eleven ends left in this game. If a tiebreaker is the level on scores in the tiebreaker after the third end, we'll have one sudden death end, so make that a possibility of a maximum of another 12 inch for the day. You know, Rudy Alcott's playing a good ball here on that forehand. And falling against the bias. enough to be in the middle of all four greens so I'm able to get a glimpse of all the action around me Ball played there by Robert Pickett. Oh, excuse me, uh, Rudy Jacobs. Holding the two. So really putting some early pressure here on uh, Robbie Pickett. Try. Oh, the good ball coming down here. Yeah. Oh, that's three. Some early pressure there. Be done on a decent track. I just don't think he'll get back with a top of weight. No. He's going to concede three shots. So, Rudy Jacobs extending his lead to four shots to zero. After two ends in the second set. Fricky's undercover. Undercover doesn't. 
really opting to go for the three quarter three quarter length. He's sticking to that back and he's finding it quite nicely. Always helps with the rhythm. Mench with the third in the second seat, just once again to mention thank you to the sponsors of this tournament. Perfect delivery and personal trust. The two companies have a very good working relationship when it comes to the bowling community. They look well off the multiple of the, the bowlers in and across South Africa. Please give them a shout. Perfect delivery, always good to have as your insurance broker as you pick up a full count in bowls and also put in a little bit of a claim, which is always nice. Feel free to give them a call if you need insurance, motor home business and travel insurance personal trust uh, to look after your financial portfolio, investments, and things of that sort. Oh, so, looks like Robbie Pickett is holding one at the moment. I'm pretty sure everybody will try and be up into the head. He's close to that ball. I just think he's going to fall under. Might have done enough to get the shot there. So I can see. But Robin now with a very, I wouldn't say dangerous type of shot, but if he holds up and gets his that white ball, he'll turn himself out. If he touches the white, he's oh, unlucky. He just runs through the hole. And sets himself up nicely for the for his third ball, depending on what Rudy does with his last ball. I think Rudy's just played this up outside the line. I think as as it's lying there at the moment, Robbie's Holding one, try and claw himself back into the set. Even more so if you can manage to get a little touch on the white on the forehand. Yeah, and then they pick a scoring two shots here, and then himself back into this second and final set. The three ends, it's advantage Rudy Jacobs. Four shots uh, to the two of Robbie Pickett. Performance also nice and quick. I'm sure it's more entertaining for the viewers who are watching. It's not hours on end sitting in front of your television screens. Down on the back end again, yeah, he's started with a decent opener. Falling about a half a meter short of the check. Really, I think he's just played this under the line slightly. 
Very decent weight he played it with. <coughs> Done with another decent ball there. Also got a foot short. Decisions now. We of course might think of having a little run at this. Just gonna try and get one close first. I'm sure if he doesn't get the shot, he will probably be playing with a little bit more weight towards the end of this this end. Just running post, still two shots, two shots down. It's a bit deceiving on your monitors, on your screens. That white ball of already ran about a half a meter past the white. And Robbie, I'm with a good chance here to make a. Looks like it's still two. He just pushed that out on a decent track. I oh, just don't think we get back from there. Very good opportunity here for Robbie to score more than two. He's played that well. Looks like he's holding three. Possible measure for the fourth. A very important ball that's for the Jacobs. He doesn't want to concede a big count of three or four shots. Well, Bob, <laughs> down on a decent track to all about the weight. Oh, he just played a cracker there. He got himself out of heaps of trouble there. taken the lead if he, if he had missed but played a pretty decent ball and got a number one out of it. So the advantage Rudy really Jacobs off the four ends, five two up. Once again, really applying the pressure again there. Good opener. Oh yes, it does the two things for me. Just a bit under the line. 
half a meter short. Once again on the line. Got it with better weight, but still under the line. Type of player Robbie is, I think you'd be a little bit more up and at this. Maybe it's looks like he's going to persist with that backhand draw. Let's just look to see him play it about half a meter over the weight. I'm just not quite sure if he's going to get there again. Oh, he's reaching. Pretty good ball there. He's only one down now. Himself down on a decent line again. Oh. Played another good ball there. He's still holding one. Probably played that just under the line. Not the type of weight I think he was looking to play it with. Would have been hoping to play with a little bit more than that. Rudy Jakob extending his lead. I think by one shot. So, yeah, one shot to Rudy Jakobs. It takes him ahead 6 2 after five ends. Four ends left to play in this second and final set of the day. We've managed to entertain you quite well during the day. Uh, back with some great action tomorrow as we get over the final hurdle. Two more sessions tomorrow morning and then uh, the finals will be up. <laughs> Pretty excited to see what's going to happen tomorrow. I'm pretty sure we're going to have full capacity of crowds here to support the the finals. He just going under the line with his first ball. Ball there by Rudy Jacobs. Uh, Robbie coming down on a decent line here. Yeah. Oh, Robbie Pickers is drawing a drawing number one there.
be good, a good chance to put himself firmly back into the city. And another one there. Down on a decent track again. See how the weight is. Oh, he's played two crackers there. Yep. Probably Pickers. Getting himself into good position. I think that set on that forehand might, might look uh, very. Expecting a little bit, bit more of a weighted shot now. Big chance here for Robert Picker to get himself back into this seat. Not much dangers. He's played the exact same ball again. Doesn't need to be short either, because it's 